I never thought I'd see a Volvo sticker for $75,000. That's the price of this 2020 XC90. And yet, compared with other luxury midsize SUVs, it's actually reasonable. We last tested the XC90 when it was brand new for 2016. Not a lot has changed in four years, not that it needed to. It's so handsome and plush. A lot comes standard, including the latest semi-automated driving assist, and there's now a Polestar power upgrade. I'll show you what Trim Cargurus recommends on the XC90 and whether you should splurge for that plug-in hybrid model. But for now, this thing is so pretty, I gotta take it for a ride. Volvo is absolutely nailing exterior design. Nothing else on the road looks like the XC90. The new Kia Telluride copies this shoulder line, which emphasizes the car's wide stance. But it's so Volvo. The LED headlights and turn signals are crisp and distinct. For 2020, the halogen lights are gone. The T6R design I'm driving blacks out the grille and window trim and crams in massive 22-inch wheels. 22s on a Volvo. The thunder gray paint looks kind of blue, You've got to see it in person. There's no bad angle on the XC90. Not anywhere. I could keep going on all day about how good this car looks. Let's go inside. Same deal. With the mix of wood, aluminum, and two-tone leather, the interior feels like the airport in Stockholm. It's so warm and inviting, but it's reserved. The R design trades the wood for more aluminum or carbon fiber. I own a 98 Volvo S70, and nearly every interior part on my car is padded no rough edges. That's for safety, and it's the sign of a well-made car. 21 years later, it's the same on this XC90. Even the glove box and these doormat pockets are padded. You don't find that on every car. I appreciate the little details, like these buckles engraved with the year that Volvo invented the three-point seatbelt, or this parking ticket clip on the windshield. On inscription trims, you can get wool fabric for the seats. And look at the tweeter and the yellow speaker cones on the Bowers & Wilkins stereo or the vertical touchscreen in this twisting ignition knob. Nothing is conventional, except the gear shifter. But if you order the T8 hybrid, they'll give you a shifter knob made of glass. So the XC90 looks great, but what about practicality? The second row can seat three across on the bench, or two if you opt for individual captain's chairs. You should order the second row bench. Not only is it cheaper, but you can also order a built-in booster seat for young children. Look how easy this is. Oh, I don't think I belong here. Now this is more like it. Adults can recline, and we've got plenty of leg room. Four zone climate control is standard, as is a third row of seats. Unlike the Telluride, it's a tight squeeze back there. But with all seats folded, there's 86 cubic feet of storage. The strangest things about the XC90 are the engines. There's no six cylinder, only a two liter turbo four on every trim. On the T5, that nets you 250 horsepower and 258 pound-feet of torque. Don't get it, it's too slow. The T6 adds a supercharger to the turbocharger. That gets you 316 horsepower and 295 pound-feet. But you can go further. The Polestar upgrade can give you 330 horsepower and 325 pound-feet of torque. It's a simple ECU flash, just like any other aftermarket chip upgrade you might buy, and you can buy it from your Volvo dealer after you buy the car. Again, this is all unconventional stuff, but that's Volvo. The T6 gets plenty of power from this little four-cylinder engine. With the eight-speed automatic, the Polestar's paddle shifters, and the optional air suspension, you'd think this was a performance car. Volvo varies the steering feel and the brake pedal feel, and the R design I'm driving is available with summer tires. The ride quality can be harsh on those 22s, but hey, they look incredible. This is not a BMW X5. You're not going to be surging in the corners or feeling the adrenaline. This is a normal Volvo that just goes a little faster. The real problem is fuel economy. Since the XC90 is so big, that tiny engine has to work awfully hard. As a result, it only gets 18 miles per gallon city, 26 highway, and 21 combined for the T6. The T5 will give you a couple miles more. Now compared to six-cylinder SUVs like the X5 and the GLE 450, the Volvo is either the same or it's worse. 
I've been averaging about 20. But there's another answer, the T8, a plug-in hybrid with up to 18 miles of all-electric range and 27 miles per gallon combined. I've driven it and it is really good. There's way more power and torque. But given the limited range, the recharging time, price, it's, nah, it's really not worth it. You should just stick with the T6. Volvo's infotainment is good and it's much faster than when we tested the 2016 XC90 four years ago. Searching online destinations is easy. It's also easy to adjust various settings like folding the rear headrests or switching apps by swiping left or right. For fun, you can make your XC90 stereo sound like the concert hall near Volvo's headquarters in Sweden. And you can email voice memos for some reason. But the apps take 15 seconds to load, way too long. Still, I'm glad they're installed on the car instead of relying on my phone. Onboard Wi-Fi is standard along with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. However, I wish Volvo put the climate controls below the screen. You have to go into the menu to adjust them and the heat controls for the seats and steering wheel. And there's no wireless charging. The digital instrument panel can switch colors, but Volvo doesn't let you customize it like Mercedes or Jaguar. I'm not that upset because so many safety features come standard. Forward emergency braking, which Volvo has offered since 2009, animal and pedestrian detection, adaptive cruise, lane keep assist, blind spot monitoring. And Volvo, like Mercedes-Benz, puts decades of safety engineering behind every car. Volvo's always leading with these innovations, not because governments are forcing them to, but because safety is the core foundation of its business. As a longtime Volvo owner, I stand by that 100%. So is Pilot Assist, which will take over the car's controls on highways and in traffic. It is a great semi-automated system. You press one button and it's on. Use it at your own risk because remember, this is not a self-driving car. My XC90 T6 R design was fully loaded for $74,735 with destination. The T5 starts under 50 grand, but that one's too basic, it's too slow, and it's got front wheel drive. CarGurus recommends that you buy a T6 all wheel drive inscription at about $66,000. That way you can get the nicer wood trim and opt for the wool fabric seats if you're interested in those. Be sure to order those 21 inch tires, but don't take the summer tires. This is an SUV built on luxury. It's not a performance car. Be careful with options because 75 grand, I think, is just way too much to pay for any midsize SUV, even one as nice as the XC90. Still, it's very competitive with the Mercedes-Benz GLE and BMW X5, and I think it's way better than the Lexus RX and the Acura MDX. Do you agree? Let us know in the comments. And read my full review at cargurus.com. Be sure to subscribe to our CarGurus YouTube channel, and thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.